Welcome. Let's talk about some of the important ways in which waste water can be treated. So the idea is the various methods that we would be discussing here. For example, sedimentation, coagulation, flocculation, and so on. The first important thing we need to understand is any waste that goes into water. It could be from house, from industries, from textiles, or any other waste that goes into the water body without treatment would lead to the sewer water pollution, and this sewer water Water pollution would impact the biochemical oxygen demand. It would impact the chemical oxygen demand, ultimately leading to decline of the dissolved oxygen, which is detrimental to the aquatic life. Now, all these concepts we have already covered in one of the lectures before. So here we would understand what are the necessary steps that must be taken in order to treat the waste water. Now, to treat the waste water, there are various ways, as we already mentioned. We can broadly classify the treatment of waste water as primary, secondary and tertiary treatment, which we would understand in a while. But to begin with some of the important ones, we would start with the sedimentation. Now, whenever water has uh, passes or goes to the lake bodies, rivers, through the rivers into the oceans, it has suspended particles in this. Now, these suspended particles, why are they produced? They are produced simply because of erosion. Now, when a river channel is moving, any rock material which is on the side gets eroded and those particles get dissolved in the water and these are called as the suspended particles that move along with the flow of water. Now these suspended particles could be bigger in size, they could be smaller in size, right? So we have to understand what is the size and then we understand how this process of sedimentation occurs. So sedimentation is nothing by a, but a process which is driven by gravity. So what happens is these suspended particles settle down. Now when they settle down, the, the layer above could be filtered and this water can be utilized. So there are two factors which are really essential for settling down. Uh, one is the gravity, obviously, because of the gravitational force, the the suspended particles would settle at the bottom of the surface. This does not require addition of any extra chemicals or any extra material. The next important thing that would determine whether the particle can settle or not is the physical characteristics. Now what does this physical characteristics involve? It involves um, the diameter, the density and the next is the medium. Now uh, what is the medium? Now this would determine uh, various factors, for example, uh, we can say the temperature. The temperature is one of the important uh, constituents which would determine whether the suspended impurity would get dissolved or it would remain suspended. So as I take a very simple example, I have a flask here and I add some salt, right? Now if I steer the normal water, it would take around let's say two seconds. I'm just taking an example. But if this is a hot water, probably it would uh, dissolve within half a second. So the temperature definitely affects the rate at which the solution is homogenized. So sedimentation is again affected by one important phenomena, which is temperature. The next is coagulation and foculation. Now both of these are necessary in order to obtain drinking water and treatment of the wastewater. Now the water which is obtained from any channel has certain small particulates and these are known as colloidal particles, right? These suspended particles which do not settle down due to the gravity are dissolved within the water. So they remain within the water and carry the same charge. Now, when they carry the same charge, there are repulsion between the atoms or uh, between the particles that do not allow them to combine and settle down as one particle. So what happens if there are small, 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 small different particles? If they don't repel, they would come together, combine as a big particle and because of the gravity, it would settle down. But what if there are repulsion forces between them? These individual particles would remain individual. They won't coalesce. Since they won't coalesce, they would remain suspended or they would uh, actually be um, dispersed, right? So what is done is some chemicals are added these chemicals are called as coagulants. They help these small particles agglomerate 
कम टूगेदर एंड देन द चार्जेस आर न्यूट्रलाइज एंड फाइनली बिकॉज ऑफ ग्रेविटी आइदर दे सेटल डाउन और दे कुड फ्लोट ऑन द सर्फेस आइदर ऑफ दीज थिंग्स कैन बी डन सो देर आर सर्टन केमिकल कंपाउंड विच आर कोल्ड कॉल्ड एज कोएगुलेंट्स दे आर यूज टू ट्रीट द वेस्ट वाटर फेरस सल्फेट इज वन सच एग्जाम्पल एल्यूमिनियम सल्फेट फेरिक क्लोराइड आर सच एग्जाम्पल्स अ सिंपल एग्जाम्पल वी कुड से फॉर कोगुलेशन इज एल एम विच इज यूज टू नेचुरली प्यूरिफाई द ड्रिंकिंग वाटर सो वेन एल एम इज मूव इन द वॉटर वट वुड हैपन इज अ टॉप लेयर दैट इज फॉर्म एंड दैट टॉप लेयर विच वुड कोहेल एज ऑल द पार्टिकल्स कैन बी रिमूव एंड द रिमेनिंग वॉटर कैन बी यूज फॉर ड्रिंकिंग पर्पज सो सम ऑफ द कॉमन कोएगुलेंट्स एज वी डिस्कस्ड आर फेरस सल्फेट एफ ई SO4 7H2O. Now the amount of water in that is really important. Aluminium sulfate. So that is 18 H2O, and then is ferric chloride, right? So these are some of the common coagulants. The next process is filtration. So filtration is removal of small particles, and this is by passing it through a porous medium. So there could be uh, a filter paper. I could say uh, on a funnel, I put a filter paper. Now this filter paper would have the smaller impurities on the surface, and the remaining clear water can be obtained in the flask, right? So this technique is. the most common technique and the most common type of filtration that is used is what is known as the uh, gravity filter right this gravity filter is also called as the granular media gravity filter right now these filter membranes have Uh, these filter ways actually have membranes or artificial membranes sand uh, filters that are present and this choice of the filter actually depends on two things one is the speed and the other is the cleanness requirement based on that whether the pores of that would be finer or thicker would be determined and the flow can be achieved by keeping this filter clear if there are blockages in the filter then definitely the rate of filtration would be less also two important things again which is taken into consideration which one is gravity the other is pressure if you have a lot of water into this then because of the pressure this water would percolate faster or because of simply the gravity the system would bring the water automatically downwards so that is what is the ways under which filtration take place so in pressure filtration one side is at high pressure the other side is at low pressure and therefore when there is a drop or the change in the pressure then the filtration process takes place at a smoother go the next is uh, cleaning the drinking water from the viruses from the bacteria so that the cleaning water the clean water does not contain or the drinking water does not contain any kind of fecal matter from animal or human beings now this is done by disinfection of the water now disinfection of the water is really important to make it potable water now this disinfection process require oxidant which is stronger than oxygen very very important 